Oh, technical difficulties here. <laughs> Welcome to episode three of the Land Geek Guys. Hey, Scott, how are you? Good, how are you, sir? I am happy to have you back on the show with me. This is great. On the show with you. <laughs> because you're in charge. No, no, no. That was no, just I'm a... kidding. I'm happy to be this? live. I'm doing great. So, for those of you who don't know, um, Scott Wasman, Mike Zeno, uh, we're land investors in the, well, you know, with, with Mark Podolsky, the land geek. And this is, what is this? What's the name of our show, Scott? This is where you come in? Nightcap with the land geek guys. Right. And so we have some smoking jackets, and, and we'll talk more about those in a minute. What are you drinking tonight, Scott? I have a Grey Goose martini, dirty with olives. Very nice. I'm going to pull away the – everybody knows. What. I have a Blanton's um, bourbon. It's very good. Nice. Very good. So I'm really excited to be here. I'm going to start. Look, we already got comments. We got views. This is, uh, this is happening. We have a best special guest ever. tonight. Yeah, best opening ever. We have – let me put that up there. Let's see. Love the smoking jackets. <laughs> yes. More to come about the smoking jackets. You have an important announcement later about the smoking jackets. Am I right? I have a very uh, important announcement, yes. Okay. All right. Stay um, tuned. So, stay tuned. Uh, love the robes. Aaron, thank, thank you. Thank you, Aaron Simmons. <laughs> thank you. Everybody feel free to, to post their drink of choice in the comments. Yes. Yes, definitely. Uh, we're going to look at some initial comments here if we get into it. I just love it. Uh, excuse me, smoking jackets. Yes, we forgive you. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I see, how about this? I see we're classy tonight. Thank you. Yes. I'm just drinking beer. Hey, there's no, you know, nightcap no, beer. beer. Don't need a smoking jacket either. Mark, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mark, let's, let's, let's let, uh, Mike, Mike, let's talk to the community about our, uh, our new term. Yes. So yes. You, you may have seen in the introduction, uh, the last frame said, it's time to robe and swivel. Was it swivel and robe, though? I'm not sure. No, I think it's robe and swivel. So <laughs> if, if the opening had worked correctly, we were supposed to swivel around with our drink, right? I had, I had a technical difficulty, Scott. It caught and, the... Uh... Yeah, it's, it's all right. So... Swivel. This is this is kind of an interesting word. Mike and I were talking about this. In terms you know, of land investing. In terms of land investing. I mean, think of the swivel like, you know, you're moving from one thing to the next, not spending too much time on one thing before you move to the next, right? Yes, I'm following it's, you. It's And I don't know. To me, the spinning, the swiveling part of it is kind of analogous to Scott Todd's spinning plates analogy. I have to say, right. I've heard, yes, yes, it's very so, uh, similar. So we've talked, we've talked about Scott Todd's uh, spinning plates analogy, right? There, there's basically five different parts of the business. Uh, they all have to spin on the plate at the same time. You have your mailing, due diligence, marketing, buying, and selling, right? Correct. Well, I mean, this is just a new way to think about it, swiveling. And just imagine your whole, your whole land investing team swiveling together. As if and one leads to the other. One kind one, of connects. Exactly. One connects to the other. And there, there is a chain. There's, there's a mechanism. One swivel leads into the next. The system so, what you're talking about. It's a system. You're, you're the leader, and you, you connect to your intake manager, and you connect to your marketing VA, and you connect to your due diligence VA. And until all five of you are spinning and swiveling with absolutely no effort whatsoever. Yes. I like that. That's a great analogy. I mean, Scott does talk about these five plates, right? Um, and all the time spinning the plates, meaning getting them moving on their own. And then afterwards they become like gears, mechanisms, and they come together and each one feeds the next, which really is, that's the beauty of our business, right? Is that, we're not doing everything, right? We build a team. We build a process. We build uh, everything that will allow us to pull ourselves out of the So we can truly work on the business and not in the business. So I think you're on to something there. I truly do. I think you're on to a great analogy there. Mike, if you get stuck, swivel. Swivel. Keep moving your feet, as Scott Todd would say, right? Exactly. Don't want to 
I mean, I guess when you swim, well, you stay in one spot, but you <laughs> you kind of turn to something else. So I love Scotchy Scotch. Is that an nice. actual brand, or is that because? I'm I'm just getting accustomed to this whole world. I mean, like I'm doing a Blanton's a uh, bourbon, but uh, I like that Scotchy Scotch. Oh, look at this! Thanks, Tyler Anderson Valley Winter's Solstice Ooh. Ale. Very nice. That's a, that very sophisticated. Good. We like sophisticated here on the uh, nightcap. Uh, right. I'm gonna go with I'm Hugh Hefner. So, <laughs> any arguments? <laughs> Uh, I thought you guys just got out of the shower drinking Willet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, it's good to hear from our friends, oh. isn't it? Oh, it is. It is. Oh, look at this. I like this. One of my chapters in Dirt Rich is a two-hour work week, Systems and Automation. I can't wait to read that book, Dirt Rich. Oh, and oh. I can't also wait to hear what he writes on the inside cover, you know, to Mike. My best friend. <laughs> may, may you live 2,000 days longer than me. Yeah, Mark, I had to get rid of the death clock. So if you guys don't know, we're all about different ways <laughs> of inspiring ourselves. So Momentum's a great app on Chrome if you haven't seen that. You open up your, uh, you open up your uh, new browser window, and it shows a beautiful scene from somewhere in the world. And you can put your tasks for the day so you're really focused on, you know, one thing. What's your what's your one thing for that day? Well, I found a version of that called the death clock where it basically said how long you had to live. And um, so I told Mark about it. Mark loved it. He loaded it up. And come to find out, I was going to live 20 days longer than Mark. So I said, I wouldn't even have time to mourn you, Mark. It's 20 days. I mean, it's that's, that's pretty brief. But I had to get rid of that. I, I pulled away from the death clock back to momentum, which, again, is a great Chrome extension. Do you have any favorite Chrome extensions? Have you used a Momentum? Have you, are you familiar with this, Scott? What, oh, yes. I, I do use a Momentum. There's a nice to-do list on there. The inspirational sayings are nice. So, yeah. yeah. I, Actually, I, I heard that uh, while I was away from the round table because I was at the fire station, uh, you stepped up with some great quotes. And do you think we could hear that quote here tonight? Because I thought it was very relevant to the business. Well, I, I don't know if I want to. Uh, oh, it hasn't come out yet. Spoil it. Oh, it hasn't. That's right. This yeah. is live. The podcast comes out next week. I got gotcha. you. We'll talk about it next week, but uh, I will <laughs> tell everyone that this is a quote I came up with on my own. Can I give my quote that may or may not be related to it? Of course. Yes. Because this is probably one of my favorite quotes of all time. And um, I thought Mark was going to put this in the cover of his, of his book, but he didn't. <laughs> it's even a fly can travel a thousand miles if it grabs a hold of a horse's tail. Yeah. Think about that. So even a fly can travel a thousand miles if it grabs a hold of a horse's tail. Now, I know if Scott Todd were listening, which I hope he is, he would be like, there we go again, Mike. Don't forget to breathe. But think about it. When we <laughs> grab a hold and we surround ourselves with people who are – successful and we bring ourselves into a community of successful people we surround ourselves with success so it pulls us into the direction of success so you know uh, sometimes it's hard to actually you know at the very beginning of any endeavor especially in investing thinking that you know how can i do this how can i take from you know i have uh, no passive income to paying enough having enough passive income to pay for my car payment and my mortgage and then maybe replace my income but you just surround yourself with like-minded people. You do the same things they do. And lo and behold, that fly is going 1,000 miles on that horse's tail. So I think that's a great quote, Scott. Do you agree? I, I very much agree. With, yes. I, th <laughs> I think that's a good quote. Uh, I think, you know, uh, you don't have to, rec you don't have to uh, invent. Uh, you don't have to. I'm going to add that quote somewhere. Nice. Thanks, you don't Mark. have to invent the wheel when Mark Kodolsky's done it for you. So. Get on those coattails and go a thousand miles. I think we can. I think we're all doing that. Mark's throwing a nice tip here too. Loom is a great Chrome extension for recording video for VA training. That's an interesting topic. I'm glad Mark brought that up. So training VAs. Yeah. Uh, you know that's. Uh, you know I live. There's a philosophy I have with VAs. It's basically hire fast, fire fast. Right, we don't. I mean, there's A-level VAs out there, right? Those are the people that are the A players, right? They're the ones that you're going to want to build into your team and treat them right and keep them there. But there, there are other ones that just 
really, uh, you know, don't really cut it at times, right? But you have to give them a chance. So my motto with the VAs is hire fast and fire fast. How about a VA tip from you, Scott? A VA tip for me. Let's see. So I tend to give them a pretty specific task the first time to see how well they follow through. Um, or, you know, a, a task with a number of steps involved and hire them for an hour, uh, tell them to send me their work back. And if I like it, I'm hiring them. If I don't, I move on to the next one. Um, okay. There's a, there's a, there's a thing in Upwork too, um, where you can, you can type out what you want them to do for you. Right. Yep. I might add, I might add something at the bottom. Like, I don't know. Um, make sure to include this. Like it's way at the bottom of the list. I'll say, make sure to include this when you're scumming the list. And if they've done that, I know they've read my directions carefully and all the way through. Uh, and they're probably something I'm going to want to work with if they can get the right work back to me. Yeah, no, that's good. You know, what I, I think, uh, you know, it's a difficult process hiring a VA, isn't it? I mean, if you've never done something before, right, you're, you're looking at how to um, really bring someone on board and really be a valuable part of your team. So, um, you know, we talk about Upwork quite a bit. One of the things I like to do on Upwork is when I do an interview with someone is uh, add something, spe you know, give them a question they have to answer or something or mention this or mention that. Because sometimes the VAs will just automatically post their applications over and over again. They'll see like 20 different application, you know, uh, site postings that look similar. But I want someone to take the, attention, take the time and pay attention and actually read the details. So give them something important that they have to actually you know, uh, repeat in the, and when they reply to your ad. Right. Exactly. And I, I mean, um, I tend to, uh, I create a lot of videos, right. And tend to create maybe one video per County, that type of thing. Uh, so, th so that's something, some advice for, for some folks that, you know, a uh, uh, VA training video for one County, you might have to do a little bit differently to, than another County, but once you do it, you save it. It's good to go. There you have nice. it. Very nice. It'd be almost like you're talking, if I'm not mistaken, like a video library or something like that. Exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a great idea. Um, I believe Mark's Did talking about. Did you just about, say idea? Uh, was you, are you saying I have an accent? I, I think. Did anyone else hear idea? Because that's what I. That's what I heard. Like endearing. <laughs> right. Yes. Like idea. Uh, yes. <laughs> anyway. <it was> <laughs> I just thought I'd make fun of your accent this evening because for the last two weeks you've been making fun of mine, which Listen, I think is I'm a big absolutely fan of, heinous. I'm an extremely uh, big fan of Fargo, and you always just <laughs> right, kind of right. bring that to me every time we talk, and I'm very fortunate, thankful for that. Uh, it's a struggle, Tal. Yeah, I agree. Uh, finding a good VA is a struggle. But when you find a good one, you treat them right. I mean, let's, let's face it. Uh, you know, uh, it takes a little bit of time and effort, so treat them right when you find them. Let's see what Mark's saying here. Go ahead, Scott. I'll let you take the take that. I'll take the question. You take the answer. Well, no, okay. I, I'm just kidding. Uh, how do you know when to fire? How do you know it's not your system or communication and actually the VA? That's um, true. Good question. Yeah, that's a great question. So, I mean, I'm pretty pretty straightforward in my training videos. So, I mean, if if somebody's skipping the steps or, or not doing what, I, what I'd like them to, uh, I'm going to be able to pick up on that right away. Um, you know, for instance, early on when I was getting into this, trying to find VAs, you know, to scrub for me, uh, the, other, the other reason I knew when to fire was when my star VA got me, you know, 200 names in a few hours and this other guy got me uh, 20 names in two hours. Um, so... Uh, efficiency is big uh, numbers. The return, the return is a big deal. And just whether or not they follow the simple, I think they're simple directions that I'm giving them. Yeah. You bring up a good point too. Um, if you didn't know every aspect of the business and you tried to outsource it before you intimately knew it, you could, you know, get into a situation where someone could do something and say, well, uh, it took me two hours, and you know it should take 30 minutes or 20 minutes, right? So, you know, knowing your business before you're outsourcing it, <laughs> look at what you are you trying to throw me off with this adjustment you're making here? <laughs> I just see Dan, Daniel's comment. I'm, I'm trying to, sorry, oh. go, I'm not trying to interrupt you. You're not supposed to preview the comments. Uh, you know, that's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> so 
So, Mark, also, uh, what I think of, when I think of Mark's question there, <coughs> excuse me, is that, you know, in the beginning, I have a lot of flexibility. When they're learning, I give them a lot of flexibility. But after they've actually understand the task, and you know they know the task, and then they continue to not follow through with what they're supposed to be, it becomes an, a leading indicating factor that this isn't going to work, right? But you have to do, it's absolutely correct, you need to give them a lot of flexibility in the beginning, um, because, you know, Sometimes it's not the student's problem, it's the teacher, right? You're teaching them. So are you teaching them correctly? And that's, so that's a very valuable point, actually. Um, and Eric Peterson just agreed with me. Look at that on the fly. He just said, yep. I'm assuming he means to anything. I'm going to pull that up anytime in the broadcast when I say something and I need someone to agree, I'm going to pull up yep from Eric yep. Peterson. So that that's for me. I, so. I, I, I want to point out, Mike, that Brian Rapier <laughs> just quoted Kenny Rogers uh, in his, in Wait his a comment. Minute. First of all, uh, Aaron William wants you to say cardio. Or is he talking to me? I think I think he's talking to you, my friend. What cardio? So who doesn't do cardio? Is it ca- how do you say that, Scott? Say cardio. Can you, can you say ca- ca- can you say cardio with Mark? Mark Mark doesn't. I don't think Mark does cardio. Mark just rides the bike. Is that cardio? He's got the bike. Remember, he rides uh, the bike around. Which is great. Oh. I think it's electric, though, isn't it? I'm not sure. We're gonna have to double check. So you're saying, Kenny? Let me, where am I gonna find these Kenny Rogers quotes? Let me see. Brian uh, Rapier, we're talking about VAs, and he quoted a Kenny oh. Rogers song. How awesome! No when to hold them, no when to fold them. And you gotta know when to hold them. Right? Oh, I you you done karaoke? I <laughs> people may not know this about me, Mike, but I actually do a little singing on the side. <laughs> You think that's funny, huh? Well, I, I think at boot camp uh, we should see some of this. Uh, and anybody in favor of that, please vote because uh, <laughs> I think I would love to see uh, Scott Bossman do boot a uh, boot camp karaoke. Boot camp karaoke. That could, be, that could be a new session, right? Boot camp karaoke. Maybe we replace that with like uh, you know maybe the uh, other traditional games we play there. So um, we'll see. But uh, yeah, you definitely need to hold them. No one to hold them. <laughs> no one to fold them. No one to walk away. And no, no one to run. to run. That's right. Uh, don't you agree, Eric Peterson? Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, here's a good question, Andy. Uh, I like this question. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna ask it and let Scott answer it. Do you hire rising stars from Upwork, or do you only hire proven VAs which have a uh, a proven work record? Like that's a great question, Scott. What's your thoughts? That is a good question, question, Andy. I, you know. I think you just need to test the waters a little bit. I think there are many people capable in the rising stars category as there are in the proven category, but numbers say a lot. So if somebody has, you know, a hundred five star ratings uh, and you're able to hire them at $5 an hour, I mean, that, that, that tells me a lot. So I'll probably go after that person first. But uh, that being said, I've had people answer, you know, ads that I put out there that, I've given them a chance because uh, they respond back to me with, you know, with uh, uh, intelligent email or, or whatnot. They seem to be on the same plane as me as far as what I want. I'll definitely uh, give them a chance as well. I agree. Good question. It reminds me of eBay, like, because you can have someone on eBay with thousands of stars, right? doesn't mean that they're having a thousand star rating for being a great seller. They could have bought coupons. They could have bought anything and just got these stars, right? So, I mean, ratings are whatever. I mean, uh, with Scott Todd brought up, do you remember it was that, was it at, was it on the round table or one of the boot camp? He brought up, maybe Mark can, if he's, uh, he might be at the ballet studio, but I'm, I'm wondering if he can remember. Scott Todd brought up this whole idea of the, of the, the, the ratings being kind of rigged and you can go and you can sift through it. There was an app. Yeah, that's true. And you can sift through it, so that kind of makes you think. But no, I hire based upon um, if they don't have a. Uh, it depends on the job, right? Um, I think if I was going to hire a salesperson, I want to have some proven ratings. If someone was screen scrape for me, I'd be willing to try someone at three dollars an hour that has no ratings, of course. Right. And just give them an hour of work. You know, say I want I want you to do this for one hour. Provide me with the results and take a look at it and and see what you get. There's a comment for Danielle. Thank you, Danielle. Daniel, I have to say, though, these are smoking jackets. I'm not going to put you in the line and say who looks better in this smoking jacket, but uh, feel free to comment. Anyway, <laughs> Eric, would you agree that I look better? <laughs> yeah. It's it's really not fair that you have control of the comments. <laughs> We're switching this up. 
Oh, did you see this? This is a great one. I love this. Have you done this? This is great. I've done this with my children. Oh, of course I've done this. Yeah. You know, make a little game. You know, uh, they, they used, uh, used to fill out the, when we used to do the old school method, filling out the, uh, the old letters and writing them out, my daughter would do that. And I would be like, give her a crayon. Give her something. Make it look like the most ridiculous writing ever because someone's going to go, what is this? I have to open it, right? Um, so definitely. And if, uh, it can, if, the, if the offer gets accepted and it traces back to her, there's a, there's a bonus, right? So you can definitely have fun like that. I mean, I don't do that now because it's all automated, but maybe I should do a little bit more of that. That was, you know, one time my daughter wanted an iPhone, so I was giving her 25 cents, was it, I believe, per stuffing and wrapping the envelope and all that. That's generous. So she, she, I thought so. Thank you. But she got her iPhone and then stopped wanting to stuff envelopes. So right. you've got to have some sort of motivating factor there. I, I had my uh, I had my boys stuff envelopes for me for a long time, and then I got sick of being uh, manager of the envelope stuffing process. But um, so now you know we want automated. But I do have a 17 year old in the house who I am hiring uh, currently to do uh, Facebook ads for me. Nice. Yes. I like that. Yeah. Look at Aaron Williams' quote. It's a good quote. There you go. I would yeah, if you totally can, yeah. agree. I love it. I love it. All right. Let's see. Oh. All right, Mark. Thank you. We really appreciate it. That's it. We get a little, I like that. We get Mark gives us a little support, a little, little plug like that. Yeah, for sure. He has a beautiful voice. Oh, you better post the comment from my lovely wife. Okay. Let me scroll up. He has a beautiful voice. Well, wow, that's really wow. I can't wait to hear that. I can't wait to hear that voice. I can't wait to hear that voice. Uh, Daniel says karaoke, definitely. There right. we go. Scott, anything this week uh, interesting in the land business for you? Anything happened? I mean, here we are, Wednesday, I believe. Sorry, my fire department rotation is 24 hours. I tend to forget what day of the week it is. Um, Wednesday night. Anything interesting this week or perhaps since the last uh, time we met for the uh, nightcap? Uh, for me, for our land business, sure. We've, we've had a couple sales in the last week. We've had a, we had a cash sale for about a $4,000 profit, uh, which Excellent. was awesome. And then we had a, we had a terms walk deal. Us, What's that? Walk us through that sale. Like how did you, how did you make the sale? Was it a buyer's list? Was it uh, you know, what, what, what triggered it? So this is this was an interesting lot for me because because I'd actually sold it three times prior on terms and everybody just kept defaulting on the same lot, just default, default, default. So, I mean, I definitely made my money out of it, right? And then uh, I had a hard time getting rid of it for a while, and then all of a sudden I just found the right buyer on Facebook this time around, and uh, he was excited about it, wanted to pay cash, and I said, okay, let's let's go ahead and do it. So. Um, you know, I bought it like a year and a half ago. I actually sold it on terms three times. You know, I think, uh, and I didn't have to give a refund on those because they all went beyond the 90 days. It was really weird. So that's the beauty about this business is when you own the land, you own the land. And if somebody's going to disappear for whatever reason, despite all of the phone calls and all the emails and all the texts that I send them, um, and I feel bad. But if they don't get back to me, then then you move on to the next seller. So there's some security in that, knowing that the land is yours. So that that was this uh, instance. So that was great. And then so we had a ter we had a terms deal this week too. That that uh, I'll I'll make my money back on it in ten months, and it's going to be like two fifty a month for sixty months. Um, and I sold that on my buyer's list. So excellent. Oh well, yeah. Well, I have some exciting news on that note. I have just learned that our special guest of the evening is in the lobby waiting oh. to be pulled up. So before we do that, though, we have a little intro for our, our special guest, and I'm going to have to take my headset off to, to get the music to play. So um, are we ready? I'm going to play the intro. Then I'll, This intro is for our, our, our special guest of the evening. So I'm going to uh, see if I can get this to actually share. What happened? It's not sharing. Give me one second. A little technical difficulty. Here we go. Application window. 
Uh oh. Oh, here we go. No, no, I got it. <laughs> there it is. Aha. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. So, this is, is that- the special guest of the evening, and he has a little a special introduction, and I'm going to play it. Ready? Ready. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> that is awesome! Great job with that, Scott. So, oh, without you. further ado, I'm going to bring him up from the lobby. In two, one, Scott Todd. What's going on? <laughs> hey. How's it going? Good. How are you? Awesome. I feel completely left out. Look at you guys. You're like in like I don't know robes. I didn't get the memo. <laughs> Scott, man. these are these are smoking jackets. Brother, man, why didn't you tell me? I would have gone out and got me one. <laughs> Here I am. I'm like in some lame shirt. You, know, you guys are like I don't know. You're you're like decked out. Uh, you, know, you know, this is, this is a big deal for Mike and I. <laughs> Oh man, man! It's, it's great to have you here, Scott. Thank you for uh, thank you for joining uh, us. We really appreciate it. I mean, I'm 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 like I can't believe I made it here, man. Like to the <laughs> third. It only took me like three episodes. I I, I beat Mark on here and everything. I, I mean, I'm honored. Yeah, it's now, phenomenal. It... <laughs> yeah, I love it, man. When's the last time you were this nervous, Scott? <laughs> oh, I, I, kind of like, I, I, I uh, look. I just finished. I just finished flight school, All and right. uh, I, I feel bad because I might have been a little hard there for a minute uh, on somebody. But oh. uh, es- essentially, that's that's what we're like. It all comes down to execution. That's I had to break out the mini bat. Come on, man. So uh-huh. I, I was I was like nervous. I'm like I, I'm not a mean guy, but. Sometimes you got to break out the mini map, baby. What, what week are we in with this flight cl- uh, flight school? This what was number ten for that one. It was number oh, 10. this is the big one. Oh, this that's was a great one. Yeah, it, it, it really is my oh. favorite. Like you know, um, like there, are, like anything, right? Like there's things that you you do that you know you uh, you absolutely love. And those things are like ah, okay, it's 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 good, but number session number ten where I get to lay out my entire business. It really is to me the coolest thing because what that does is it, I think what it shows everybody is one how big of a bum I really am, uh, <laughs> and I try I try to work hard to be a bigger bum than I was last month. And then beyond that, it, it really shows people I think what is possible within this land investing business because it's it's crazy, man. It's just absolutely crazy. I love so, that. Go ahead, Mike. No, no, you go. No, so uh, Scott, I was just going to ask you when when you say you're a bum and you're showing people, uh, you know, the mechanics of your business here by drawing it out. Uh, I mean, how many how many hours a week do you spend in your in your actual land business with all the systems and processes and and a, and support that you have, and then how many hours a week do you spend in the sky or experiencing <laughs> or experiencing, uh, you know. The, the new thing that Mike and I have been talking a lot about is time freedom, not only financial yeah. freedom, but time freedom. Yeah. So look, um, for my land investing business, I spend about eight to 10 hours a month. Okay. On my land investing business. And it wasn't always there, man. Like when I started, you know, when I started, I had my full time gig. I had to, I had to limit how much time I spent to it. Cause I only had a limited amount of time. Like everybody who's probably watching this, you know, like, you know, you can only do stuff at night. So I was spending about 20 hours a week on my land investing business. Um, but every month I work to chip away at the stuff that I'm doing. I follow and I, I teach Like I teach this in flight school. I teach it in session seven, which is building a VA team. Find the thing that you hate the most in your business right now, the bottleneck. Find it and ask yourself, can I eliminate that work? And if you can, great, eliminate it. If you can't, then can you automate it? And if you don't know how or it's too complex, no problem. Delegate it, okay? Because when you delegate it, it you now have produced more time. And then all of a sudden, you're able to, to kind of create that time freedom like you're talking about. Because, Scott, you know, like, um, 
you know, it's it's funny because last August uh, I decided, hey, I'm going to learn how to fly a plane. It's something I had wanted to do, and I wanted to, to be a pilot for Pete's sake. And I decided I'm going to go do this thing. And I remember I went to the to the flight instructor, and he took me up in a in, in the plane and said, okay, look, here here is what you think. I'm like, oh, it's fantastic. And uh, I said, look, if 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 time is no object. And economics is off the table. So time is not a problem and money's not a problem. How often should I be flying? And he said, three times a week. And I'm like, done. Three times a week. So I went Monday, Wednesday, Friday to a two hour lesson. I finished the flight training in five months, which the school told me was a kind of a record for, for them. They had to finish it in five months. Wow. And um, essentially what, what it was, it's not that I'm a phenomenal you know, person, it was the fact that I had the time. And so what would happen is, I mean, there was a week there in that five months where uh, Hurricane Irma came in. We couldn't fly for a whole week, okay? But because I was already on the schedule three times a week, if bad weather was there, I couldn't fly, no problem. Two days later, I was there. And you retain so much more when you're doing it back to back that, you know, yeah, now it gives me the time, freedom that I can, you know, go out and my wife to lunch or do, do whatever I want to do. It's, it's really crazy how much you can enjoy your life when you don't have the restriction of, of time or the economics either. That's awesome. Scott, I'm I got drinking a, a margarita, by the way. Margarita. Yeah, we're going to wow. ask what you're drinking. Nice. Yeah. Is it blended, yeah. blended or on the rocks? Uh, it's, it's, uh, rocks. It, it was on the rocks. It's um, a little melted, but yeah, it's blended. Nice, nice. I, I got to, you know, you brought up a few things that prompted a question in my mind, Scott. So we talk about, you know, all of us now are in this, uh, this language about the five plates, which is a great analogy about the different parts of the business. What would you say was the easiest part of the business to get off of your plate, so to speak, using a pun, and the hardest part? So whether it was automation, delegation, what would you say, looking back over the, uh, you know, the process you went through, what would, be the, what would you say was the easiest part to remove, and, and what was the hardest part? Okay, so the five plates, uh, I, I referenced the five spinning plates. They, they basically go to the big domains. It's, it's mailing, it's marketing, uh, I'm sorry, mailing, due diligence, marketing, sales, and kind of the admin. Those are the five plates that I see for this business. And so basically what I try to do is I try to like take an entire domain if you want to get rid of it. And I think that each one of those five plates is so hard. To me, sales was the hardest one. It was the last one that I got rid of because uh, basically, you know, getting the list, mailing list, that's something that, that really anybody can do. I had a hard time turning over the leads to somebody else because that's like, it's like really giving them the keys to the car and telling them, don't wreck it, right? You know, and right, I'll tell right. you, like the the person, the first person I hired, uh, you really have to have a little bit of patience, but you got to hang in there. And I think that one of the things that I was doing is I was working side by side with them, so I was making sales like kind of with them, and I had no desire to necessarily like make the sale. I wanted them to, to get the commission, so I would I would uh, make a sale and show them how I did it and what I was doing and give them the commission, which I didn't have to do. But all of a sudden, right. man, they, they realized, like, man, this guy is, at least I hope that they realized that, that I wasn't out to, to, I was there to help them. And they're still with me, right, uh, two, two, and a half, uh, two and a half years later. Wow. So I think that it comes down to, to kind of um, really building, you know, finding the pain points, finding the things that you want to get rid of, putting people in there to do the work. And then you start to chisel away at that work every day. And then when you do that, man, it's amazing how much time you can actually create for yourself. Yeah, for sure. Oh, Mark's back. Mark is oh, back. Mark can you see that? Back. You can see that, Scott, huh? That's I nice. That. Yeah. And we got another one. Just so you think Mark's not the only one loving, we've got another team spot right here. Uh, yeah, see? Barely. You know, what I'm not doing a good job of in flight school, just to be honest, I'm not doing a good job of, of um, making sure that all the flight school students are like indoctrinated into the team Scott program. So I'm going to do a better job of that. I'm not going to make sure that like, I don't know, I'm not going to print up, maybe I have to print up bats like to just say team Scott when they graduate and it's like, here, here you go. Nice. Well, I, Speaking, go ahead. Uh, yep. No, no, no. Uh, Mike, I think, I think you should also, uh, 
make sure that you recognize the comment. I think it might have been from Aaron about Scott's lighting. I mean, his lighting back there is, is that a red tinted light, Scott? Oh well, yeah, man. It's, uh, it's, um, you know, I got <laughs> lights in here. I mean, you know, like, I mean, I, I enjoy, I do enjoy like, um, the, like the, the mood lights here. Let, let's just change. This oh, up right yes. Now. You know, we can, we can change up the lights, you know, we can, we can kind of put in like a Hawaiian sunset in there or, Typically, this is my, I actually have this set up. It's, this is my flight school colors. Tonight, I didn't use it. I don't know why. I actually decided to use, uh, what was this? I used the Savannah, Savannah Sunset tonight. That's, that's this one right here. So it's more of that orangish color. But uh, uh, I, do, I do like to kind of, you know, kind of change up the colors a little bit. And then if I'm really, really tired or, you know, if I really just need to relax, Mike, <laughs> Here's my my Mike Zeno Zen. That's, that nice. that's not it. Hold on. Wait, 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 hold on. That's the wrong one. Uh, sorry. Here it is. It's, Mike, it's, you you have a little work to do on your background. I'm just saying. Well, you yeah. know, I'm I'm actually we're getting ready to finish the third floor as our master suite <laughs> with my own office, and I am going to have my own mic. I'm going to have my own lighting. I'm going to copy everything that Scott, as I normally do, and everything Scott does when it comes to land investing. I just copy. That's the way to, you know, Samsung, right? That's Samsung success. That's exactly. <laughs> well, look, man, like for for flight school, I got the whole studio here, man. Like I got, we got professional lighting up here. You know, like we got two lights up here. I got the nice camera up here. Yeah, Eric. Eric says he's gonna make a team, Scott. He's perfect. <laughs> I got the I got the wireless mic going on over here. I don't think it's doing wireless mic, man. You know, I I try I try to like, I try to outdo Mark. You know, I don't tell him all the stuff that I have because, man, if he could see my, you know, he uses a wireless headset for uh, for flight school. Uh, here he is. You want shopping tomorrow, Scott? You've inspired. Yeah, man, like, yeah. I, I got I got, it, I got it down for for flight school, man. I got a whole. Thing <laughs> I love it. You're definitely out geeking all of us, Scott. So. You well, you know, like, I, and I constantly look to say, like, man, I, if I could create a whole TV studio right here, I'd do it. Like, if I could figure out how to get the little camera here and the switchers and whatever, I, I don't know. What to say? It, we have a feeling it'll happen. Well, you know. <laughs> I, yeah. No, we don't. So, yeah. I, I got to say that, uh, uh, that um, uh, I mean, to cut you off there, Scott, boss, right. but, but I did. Yeah. <laughs> But I always I said this at one of the boot camps. And I like to reiterate here. So I like Scott Todd is like my big brother in the land investing business because he inspires me. He he motivates me. This is why Laura and I go to all the boot camps. We're surrounded by people who are taking the business to a higher level, and not you know and, and not just uh, satisfied with being where they are. They keep growing. So I really th I thank you for that, Scott. It, it is true. That, you know, from the bottom of my heart, it's an inspiration, and I'm glad you came on tonight. This is uh, phenomenal. To have you here, so it legitimizes yeah, us. Sure. I think is what this is. This oh, is a legitimizing sure. moment for us right here, having you on. Not our that show. these, not that these did not. <laughs> not that the smoking us. jackets. Did you probably didn't see our intro, Scott? You're going to have to go back and watch the replay. We had an interesting intro. All right, well, I'm going to I'm gonna have to go back and um, <laughs> back and watch it, right? To really see. Uh, so Scott, I, I have a question for you. Okay. So, uh, so kind of, kind of uh, going off what what Mike said there. So, you know, I, I also look up to you a lot. You were my coach. Uh, it was it was an amazing experience. So, I want to ask you, uh, uh, point blank, why do you highly recommend coaching to people? Well, look here's the, here's the deal is, um, you know, I think I think that uh, there there are certain parts of this business that are kind of you know they're on on the on the at the highest level it's really a simple business right like it, it's just simple you buy you buy land cheap and then you you turn around and sell it but then there's a lot of things that come in from a mindset perspective that's not so easy right like we we are all battling our own mindset issues. I mean, I struggle with them and I, I've talked to other people, other successful people that I know that they all feel the same way. Like there's certain parts of, of anything that you can easily talk yourself out of being successful. Right? Like you hit a road bump and you're like, well, it's not meant for me. Well, there's nothing that there's nothing out there that's not meant for you. You can do whatever you want, but I think that the biggest thing that we all run into is, is this mental mindset of, you know, 
I, I can't do this. And even though it's a business, it's a simple model, if you will, there are some tough spots along the way. And then you, you need somebody there that's going to kind of walk you through it to the other side, you know? Um, and I think that's where, where coaching comes in is, you know, this is somebody who, who has made it to the other side, if you will. They, you know, they've, they've crossed that, that river and they can help you cross the river. And, you know, essentially, you, you, you know, I think we all have dealt with those, those mental issues. Scott, I mean, like, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to necessarily, you know, fire it back at you, but, you know, if anybody's ever been to boot camp, you know, Mark loves to play the the dude buddy, uh, you know, <laughs> the dude buddy box, box message, right? And it, he's played it so often, I kind of have it memorized. He says, dude, buddy. This is you speaking, by the way, Scott. Hey, dude, right, buddy, right, right. Mark, dude, buddy. Man, we're, we're, I'm, 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 uh, I'm going crazy over here. I can't believe it. I'm at seven hundred dollars passive income, and I'm on the verge of this California deal. I don't know what to do. And I remember, I remember the very first call with with you and Aaron, and you know, you guys were walking me through your kind of your vision of what you wanted, and there was a little bit of skepticism in there from from you. And I'm not trying to be mean about it. I'm just trying to say that. There was some skepticism because you're like, man, I don't know. I don't know how, I don't know how all of this is going to work, right? Like, I don't know how all of this is going to work. And um, one of the concerns that you, like you share with me is, man, like I'm going to run out of money in buying these properties. And Aaron and I agreed. We said, the money will appear, right? Mm -hmm. And I, Scott, I remember you looked at your wife and you didn't do it in a, in a bad way, but you looked at her like, you say that all the time, and she's a big <laughs> believer of it. And I will tell you that, you know, I think what would happen is let's go back and re rewind. If you didn't have a coach, then I think what you would find is that there would be parts of this business that really freaked you out, and you would take your foot off the gas pedal, and you probably wouldn't be where you are today because you wouldn't have had somebody there pushing you saying, it's okay, go, go ahead. Your entire life, you've had a coach, whether you know it or not. Your, your parents were coaches, right? Like you, they, they helped you. Come on, Scott, you can walk. Walk to me. You, you are a coach in your, in your everyday job because you're helping people who are, are kind of, you know, getting rehabilitated. They're, they're, they're getting there. You help people all the time. And I think that that's the fact that we all, whether we realize or not, we have coaches all around us. They may not be laser focused on what we need. And I think that they're, that's where the value comes in from having a coach. As you want. Yeah. Aaron, Aaron's saying, you know, and the money, and the money appeared. It does. I'm telling you. I, 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 it, I wish it, really, yeah. it did, didn't it? It really, it really did. It, it, uh, you know, uh, my wife and I are, are quite different in the sense that, I am a planner and I overthink things and she, uh, she jumps into things, right? She wears her emotions on her sleeve. She just, she's a little bit. <laughs> so we meet in the middle, right? We meet in the middle. We're a good balance for each other. Uh, and we definitely met in the middle at the beginning of our journey. And she was right. And you were absolutely right. The money showed up and, it was, it was phenomenal. Like, okay, I got a coaching payment coming up. Oh, look what happened. I just made a cash sale for that amount. And, uh, and then the next month I made a cash sale for two times that amount. Right. And it just kept coming and kept coming. But the reason it kept coming was you're exactly right, Scott. It's because, because I had you and I had Mark and I had people in the community encouraging me and pushing me along and, and, and challenging my limits and, uh, and you're right. That's what I do with my job. And I, and I've come to realize that a lot. Like I think about that a lot now, you know, I, and, and to be able to help other people now in that is, is really rewarding. And, uh, it's gotta be rewarding for you. So in any event, I, th I think I, you know, I thank you, Mike, thanks you a lot of us. Thank you. And, uh, Hey, now, <laughs> yeah, Scott, well, I hey, got... you know, it's Go ahead. cool. Yeah. It, it is cool because, uh, you know, like, uh, like to, to see your development and to see other people's development and their growth 
it really, it's really a cool experience when you look back and you're like, man, um, you know, I played some small part in that person's life, right? You know, last week and last week, what was cool was uh, Roberto was on there saying, like, I, man, it was Scott holding me accountable and doing it. I don't even know. Oh, yeah, Mike, said, I think your mic kind of gone down a little bit there, Scott. You kind of oh, fading in and out. I'm oh, sorry. Can you guys hear me now? Yep. Now we can. Okay, sorry. So, you know, to, to hear what Roberto said about that, that was cool. And then to hear, uh, to see what Aaron wrote, Aaron Williams, when he said uh, he didn't want to, he didn't want to, like, see the look on my face of, of disappointment if he didn't do something. Then Mimi sh chimed in. You know, and I, I was looking at that. I'm like, holy cow, man. Like, these, these guys are, uh, you know, have impacted their life in some way. And then I was talking to somebody tonight who's been doing the land investing business for about uh, 18 months. They went through coaching. And I was just talking to him. And I said, hey, how's your passive income? Has that hurt for in a while? And, and he said, oh, man, I, 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 uh, I, won't, I won't say who it is. But he, he told me, he said, um, he said, man, in the last two months, I've done 60 deals, $250,000 of land sales. And my passive income as well is, is into the five figures, right? So wow. he still has his day, his day job. No problem, right? He's like, but man, if something happened to my job, guess what? I'm golden. So it's cool to see, you know, somebody who is able to do that for their family. And I said to my wife, I'm like, you know, uh, if, if something happened to me tomorrow, I, I, would, I impacted someone's life, you know, yeah. and that's a really cool experience. Yep. Awesome. Well, Scott, we really appreciate you coming on. And this is the time of the night where we have our toast of the night. Are you ready, Scott Bosman, with the toast? Well, first, first we need first to announce we... a couple oh, announce. to the community, right? So, so next week is our fourth call. Wait a minute. There's an echo. Is this, Scott, you don't have Facebook open, do you, Bosman? Or I do not. Scott, Todd? Sometimes the Facebook throws an echo. I don't know if that's what it is, but, but go ahead. Continue. All right. So uh, next week is our fourth episode. Pretty exciting, right? Uh, like so <laughs> in honor of our one-month anniversary, we are going to draw a name out of a hat for a free one-hour coaching call. Nice. Right, Mike? That's right. Next week? Next week. All right. So... All you have to do is leave a comment in uh, the live comment section here, and uh, we'll put a we'll put your name in a hat and and draw for a free one hour coaching call. Uh, Mike and I also made a decision today that uh, we're gonna have another drawing of sorts. Quarterly? Uh, huh? Is it quarterly or monthly? What were you gonna do with this uh, one? I don't know. I think we'll, we'll start with quarterly. But uh, if you leave if you leave your name in the comments, uh, we're going to collect all these names uh, every every three months or so. What we do this? Wait, wait a minute. We'll ask Eric Peterson. Should it be quarterly? Yep. yep. I like Very that. Good. I, just, I, I guess good. it's going to be quarterly. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna draw your name out of the hat uh, for a free smoking jacket from the Land Geek guys. Nice. So you can join us in the robe and swivel. <laughs> Man, where, where's, where's my robe? I, I, I got to go and put my name in there and see if I can get it. <laughs> uh, you, you and Mark may, be, may get a special robe, Scott. As, as long as uh, mine's better than his, it's all good. <laughs> okay, all right. We'll, well have special lighting or something. This is the so, time of the night for the toast of the week, Scott. Let's do it. It's, All right, know, okay. Scott, Scott's got his uh, margarita. You got your girly. I mean, your your drink, and I got my. <laughs> I got my. Bourbon. All right. Are we right? Well, first off, do you want to ask Mark, Mike? Or do, should we see if there are any other questions or not? Are we good? Oh, well, Scott, uh, we do have uh, this comment from Eric Peterson just came in. Scott Todd, you need the fighter pilot helmet. <laughs> do you have it? Is this real? He's like, look, I think he's really got one. Awesome. All right. 
What did Chris Grassman say? Don't really school? have a private pilot, but this is the best I have right here, right? Like, I, I got this thing. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Oh. So, the only I problem like is that. with this on, I can't hear what you're saying. So <laughs> I don't know. I got to take it off. There we go. It's off now. So I don't know. All right. Awesome. Hey, Barry's here. Barry, we haven't seen you since uh, Arizona. Nice. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. All, All right. right. This is it. You got your margarita, Scott? Scott uh, Boston is going to do the toast of the week. It's, it's... <clears throat> All right. Here we go. Not sure where this uh, originated, but I found it online and I and I liked it. What's so funny? Yes, I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> you don't know? Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. There are good ships and there are wood ships, the ships that sail the sea. But the best ships are friendships, and may they always be. Oh, that's cheers. I love that. Cheers. Scott, Man, that I sounds like you. a Mike Zano quote he just made up. <laughs> I'm rubbing off on people. Scott, thank you for joining us. We really do appreciate it. I know you're busy. You got the flight school. It was really, uh, it was, it was awesome that you came on tonight, and uh, uh, we're, we're so happy that you did. So thank you very thank, much. Thanks for having me, guys. I, I Hope love you liked your here. intro. Uh, Scott Boston put a lot of time and effort into that intro. The James Bond I, of the Land. I loved it. I loved it. Th <laughs> thanks for having me, guys. All right. Thanks a lot, Scott. Take care, guys. See everybody next week. Take care. See you, everybody. Good night.